in your opinion, what are some of the elements that a, a wedding DJ needs to have? Are, are there certain songs you need to play? Are there certain things that you need to add into the, into what you do to make it enjoyable? Yeah, I think, you know, um, what I tell a potential client when I speak with them on the phone is I'm going to take care of your wedding um, as a coordinator would. So, you know, you want to look for somebody. I think anybody pretty much could um, buy equipment and go out and uh, and play songs. But, you know, you've got to have the personality. You've got to have the, uh, the organiza- organizational sure. skills. Um, you have to know how to read the crowd. In the beginning, uh, well, in the beginning and even now, you have to know how to read the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as music goes, I've learned that um, <laughs> wedding reception music is pretty much wedding reception music, if you will. Sure. Um, maybe not the best thing to say, but it's true. Because I'm always thinking about what can I throw in to be different? What can I do this? And what, what can I do? But when I open up the dance floor and I make it a point to let everyone know that guest requests are more than welcome they always come up and ask for the exact same songs oh yeah yeah in fact there was a point in my illustrious career when uh i said to myself hey i'm never gonna play old-time rock and roll again because i'm so sick and tired of hearing old-time rock and roll i played it so many times um (laughs) I never want to hear it again. And lo and behold, the next weekend, you know, Aunt Gertrude comes up and says, aren't you going to play old time rock and roll? So at that point, I decided that's not such a good idea. Sure. You know. Um, hey, oh, just out of curiosity, has that has that song now become Hey Yeah by Outkast? Is that <laughs> is that now like the, are you kidding me with this? One more time? Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of them. Um, in my software, uh, you can you can uh, see how many times a song has been played. Yeah. Well, Cupid Shuffle and Cha Cha Slide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're in the four hundreds. Right, 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 right. So right. Yeah, 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 that's wild, man. Um, so it's it's interesting as you kind of talk about how you got into DJing. Are there are there DJ apprenticeships or is it really just putting yourself out there, booking gigs or going to bars and just saying, hey, I'm willing to play if you'll have me. You know, I've got a good friend up in Clarion. Uh, his name is Jamie, and uh, he's got a really, really uh, great um, DJ company. He used to be a, a, a multi operator, so he had a lot of guys working for him. Sure. And then he decided along the way that he'd rather just be a single op, um, like most of us are. But I know that he recently took a young guy under his wing and made him his apprentice so Mm -hmm. to answer your question yeah it does happen in my case um it didn't i just kind of learned as i went and did research and back then you know you got a figure in the 90s um in the late 90s you couldn't if you didn't have a song you couldn't just um download it you couldn't go to amazon you couldn't go to youtube and download and buy the song you had i had to go to national record mart or Camelot music at the mall, mm-hmm. and if a bride wanted a particular song that I didn't have, I'd have to buy a $19 CD <laughs> and add it to my already heavy case yeah, that, I, right. that I carried them in uh, just for that song. So things are so much, so much easier now. Is that the biggest change that's happened in DJing? Is how the actual music gets distributed? Or I think are, are, so. Okay, so are, what, what other large changes have you seen in the industry in the past 20 years? I, I would say, I would say that, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know, besides the obvious thing that um, equipment's gotten easier to tote and sure. heavier and easier to use, um, you know, my goodness, you've got, you've got Bluetooth if you want it. Right. You've got um, powered speakers, mm-hmm. um, which takes me back to, you know, in uh, my original equipment consisted of a lot of things, but two of the things that were the heaviest thing in my equipment, the heaviest two things, um, were my amps. I had yeah. one to run the subs and one to rub, run the tops, and each one probably weighed, without exaggerating, 60 pounds. <laughs> 
that where you're, now... That you're lugging upstairs. <laughs> yeah, lugging upstairs, yeah. no kidding. Along with those big 18-inch uh, fuzzy black subs yeah, yeah. that uh, they don't make anymore, thank goodness. <laughs> but uh, uh, equipment's evolved so tremendously, but being able to just grab a song at the drop of a hat is is awesome. Yeah.